This is awkward, isn't it? 2020. So, I'm Stanis Vitanis and I'm here to talk to you about Visa. What do you that we have developed for those people that we see over there, the names? And, uh, well, let me start by the motivation. As web applications become increasingly popular, 3 city models can greatly benefit from the existence of support for 3 city model files in the browser. And uh, more importantly, if you think about the dream of having a web application where you can uh, view, investigate, or even edit, manipulate your 3D data into the web browser, which effectively means you can use it everywhere in your laptop, in your, uh, in your phone, no matter what operating system you have, and without having to install anything in your computer. So we've had CTGML for a while, but it's also CTGML based on GML and GML based on XML. And um, XML has been used in the web for like a lot of years before, but the last 10 years, there's a huge transform from XML to JSON in the whole web world. And the same thing kind of happened when CTGML was introduced as an encoding for CTGML. And CTGML by its nature is supposed to be closer to the programming languages data structures, uh, mostly those that are used web applications, and promises to be a more user-friendly, uh, web-friendly encoding. Um, and therefore, when we had that, we thought, what if we had an implementation to prove that or test that, but it's actually true, whether we can actually use JSON easier to make something like the thing that I described before possible. And there it comes, Pizza. <gasps> what happened over there? So the idea is that Ninja can work as a reference implementation for CTJSON on the web. And we set up four requirements for that. The first one being that we wanted to support all main geometric types. So we wanted to support solids, uh, surfaces, um, geometric uh, instances and stuff. We wanted to provide a clean way to investigate and manipulate the uh, city model, in other words, uh, a nice and easy, clean way so you can get a gist of what is inside your 3D city model, the hierarchy of objects, the attributes, and all those things. Uh, we want it to be easy to show and edit the information of specific city objects, not only the relationship between them, but also specifically what every object has, how many geometry does it have, what kind of geometry does it have. And we also have wanted to have support for versioning, which is something that we have also been investigating lately. So we, have it, we wanted to have a straightforward way of um, navigating through the history of the versions inside of the 3D city model. Now, how do we do that? Well, we use JavaScript, which is a typical thing that you would use for a uh, web application, for developing a web application. And more specifically, we investigate the use of Vue. Uh, Vue is a framework, a front-end framework, um, that's supposed to accelerate and enhance the ability of developing front-end applications, so applications that are working in your browser. And we chose Vue for two reasons, mainly. Uh, first, because it allows us to encapsulate the logic of the application in certain components. So with Vue, you can, you can divide things in components, and then you can reuse them, like have the viewer, and then you have some kind of a editor, and then you can uh, plug and play, and you can plug those things together. So the viewer and the editor are, are communicating, and then you can reuse the component here and there. Uh, the second thing is that it enables us to do more things by uh, promoting the use of data binding, which is uh, which means effectively that you can have one um, variable, one, one source of the data, and then you can plug those data to those components that we referred to before. And as data chains, the components themselves are responsible for getting updated based on the changes that occur in the data in the first place. We used certain other things uh, for that for the for Ninja. Uh, we used Bootstrap for the visualization part, so the uh, layouts, the buttons, the colors and stuff as an easy way to start with that and to start with the layout and the presentation of the um, of the application. And Bootstrap also allows us to have more tools about being uh, having a responsive application. So meaning that the same application could work in smaller or bigger screens and could adapt uh, respectively. We, of course, use 3JS. 3JS is the main JavaScript uh, library for rendering 3D data in the browser. And um, well, that's because it's probably the most popular and robust library that exists uh, for JavaScript for web applications with data. 
So let me show you Linux architecture and its functionality while we actually see uh, the application working in practice. You can visit the web page in ninja.cdjson.org or you can download it and run it yourself, but it's, uh, it doesn't make any difference. And this is a basic review application. As we said before, so view is composed of components, and here we are going to see the main components and how the application does it. So the application mainly is responsible for handling all the data and basically orchestrating how the components act based on those. And of course, the data is basically the fixed model and also some uh, state for the application, like the select object and the preferences of the user. So now I've loaded a file by dragging and dropping in the respective box. And on the right, we can see that we have a 3D viewer. This is called the 3JS viewer component, and this is based on 3JS, which is a library for visualizing the data in JavaScript. We can click button view, of course, as we would expect in any such case, and we can also double click to select a specific object, in which case we can see more information, and we're going to talk about that in like a few moments. Um, the rendering is done in such a way that colors are based on the object type, and the user is capable of changing that through the settings button. So for instance, we could make the terrain white in this case, and now we see that it uh, immediately changes. So that's one of the good things that you do to the data binding that we said before about you. Uh, as soon as we change any information in the application, all components are being informed and they change uh, uh, accordingly. So on the left side, we have the tree view, which we believe is a very important um, component because it can highlight the structure of the file. And in a very concise way, we can see what is the structure of our model actually. So it's useful because you go to, go to see the hierarchy and also some basic um, information about every object. For instance, for every object we see the ID of course, and then on the left we have a symbol which denotes what is the object type. And in the right side, if there's uh, any geometry, then we can see how many geometries we have and the LODs of those geometries. For instance, here we only have one geometry of LOD2. And maybe if I scroll down, we can see that uh, there's a terrain actually in this file. Um, well, here it is. And uh, again, you can uh, click on something and then immediately the, this object is being selected. And of course, it's highlighted in 3D view and we see more information. That's another new component. The third basic component that we have built is this one that you see when you select an object and it's called the object card. And basically, this gives us more detailed information about a specific object. In that case, for instance, we see the ID here and the object type on the top with the description. And of course, we can see detailed the attributes, so we have five attributes here, for instance, and then uh, the list of geometries and the types, which we think is a very good way of understanding the uh, structure of an individual city object in more detail uh, when you need so. And this is also how you can actually edit the file. So by clicking the edit button, we show the uh, raw JSON data, uh, as you would find it inside the citation file if you, would if you would open it with an editor. And then uh, you can change that actually, and then as soon as, for instance, I made the, this building a building part, as soon as I save that, then I expect the application to change any colors and stuff. So you see that the symbol changed here. It also changed here in the TV on the left. This is all done due to this uh, attribute that we said before that you always monitor the data and all the components respond accordingly. So I can change some things. I uh, happy to change this one. Uh, we could also change some attribute, for instance. Uh, this one has one that is called roof type. It used to be uh, 1030. We can make it a thousand and then we can save that. And now I can actually download the new version of the file with the changed uh, object type and the attribute that I just changed. Now, finally, when we talk about how we see the object of the file, we can also do some search. And the search is basically done on the snippets of, of JSON. So basically, anything I type is going to be uh, matched with the content of every individual city object. So for instance, remember that we have this root type of 1000. If I type 1000, then I expect that only the root type 1000 is going to be there. Or one of the things I can do, I can search by object type. So I can type team, for instance, and then in that case, I would only get the team object or maybe any other city object that happens to have team as a part of its uh, uh, rotation. Now, there's another functionality that we didn't demonstrate so far, and that is about version. So here I'm going to open a version citation file based on the previous publication, and this one is one that holds many different versions. Initially, we'd only see everything, all city objects, and that means basically that you would expect to have multiple objects. Here, I have an object where I have moved its roof, and this is the one with the moved roof, this is the original one. But actually, now that this is a version object, I have an additional tab on the left. So before I only had objects, now I have versions as well, so I can click on versions, and that way I can view the list of versions. This one is a file with two branches, so I can switch between branches. This looks a lot like GitHub or GitLab, uh, as an interface, if you're aware of those. And then I can basically click on any specific version and I can see that. So for instance, here you see how 
Um, now I only have the version with the moved group, and here I have the initial version without the moved group. And then as soon as I select a specific version, I can, as normal, go back to objects and do all the things that we showed before. So I can navigate through the specific version and do the editing and uh, do all the changes that I want. And I can download that specific version. And this version is also highlighted here at the top. So we developed Ninja as a reference implementation for CityJSON. And that was some sort of an experiment to see whether actually we did it in the premise of CityJSON that it would be more web-friendly is actually true. And I think we figured out the method of this because basically you managed to uh, develop something without using any additional libraries. And for us, starting from zero, having something workable was quite fast. And it, the, the JSON nature actually shows itself a lot as we go more and more towards development. Um, of course, we also identified some interesting things about CityJSON itself though through the process. So for instance, um, by developing the application, we realized that having a global list of vertices, the coordinates that we have on one side, and then each of the city objects as difference to them, if you know what the uh, situation does in that perspective. Um, we found that this is a limitation uh, sometimes, and it can make development harder, although well, it can be justified as something that uh, makes the file size smaller, but anyway. Now, regarding the um, final result, we think that having something in a browser has, of course, the benefits that we expected in the beginning, that someone can just quickly uh, see uh, the content of the city model without having to install anything. You can just um, open a browser, go to ninja.cityjson.org, and just look at the content of it. Everything runs more on uh, the client side, so the user doesn't have to worry about privacy or its data being um, somewhere on the internet. But this approach also imposes some limitations because everything, as we said, now is a browser, and the browser is not the best approach for having performance. And that probably means that there's a certain scale upon which you cannot go because we're only up to a certain size of uh, city objects is something that can be managed in a browser. We identified that sometimes the experience that the user can have can differ from one browser to another. For instance, uh, Firefox tends to be slower, especially the kind of the 3D rendering part than uh, Chrome itself. But nevertheless, um, one of the main outcomes that we had when we developed Ninja as we wanted to make it uh, more and more easy in features and add more information for the user to understand the content of the CC model, uh, we realized that when designing the user experience, we had to find a certain limit between the amount of information you can show to the user and the amount of information that the user can actually comprehend. So this is always a balance act and how we show the information to the users should be done in such a way that it's at least gradually. So we cannot show all the information about city object at once and the amount of information that you can show with symbology, colors and stuff, it has to be in such a way that it doesn't discourage, especially non-expert users. So the insight is not going up in development and we encourage users to visit ninja.cityjation.org and use it for themselves and see what's good and bad. And we strongly encourage everyone to come back at us. You'll find the link in our GitHub repository. You can add issues with bugs you might find or enhancements you think you might, we, might, we might be able to uh, implement so that we can make your life easier. And uh, we also strongly encourage people to contribute and get involved in the development if they wish so. Um, ourselves, we already have plans about improving that and we're actively working on stuff to add Ninja. Like, so we believe that we have proven that it's quite easy to develop web application by using the power of CityJSON and using modern web application tools. And we're always uh, trying to find an equilibrium between effectiveness, usability, and simplicity uh, in Ninja. We think that Ninja can be very useful for researchers, practitioners, and decision makers to get a better glimpse of the data they have in mind without having to have any um, expert tools, any um, specific tools installed in, the, in, the, uh, in their computers. And uh, we also think that showing versioning can also make the concept of versioning closer to the community and add some usefulness in the, the process of manipulation of the data. Well, that was fun. Thankfully, that was pre-recorded, so nothing awkward could happen. So see you on the other side for any more questions. Thank you very much.